And we're on to part B. So if you just saw my last video, I just bought a whole bunch of crap. Well, I wouldn't say crap. A whole bunch of little cheap items from, from Sham Show Po in Hong Kong. The place to get electronics. And it's on the Kowloon side. I'm in, I'm in Causeway Bay. But I like it. I, I would prefer to travel over there to get a whole bunch of small stuff. Because there's always little useful things. And there's more choice there. And it's just... It's kind of a... A little treasure for people that like electronic things and you know if you're a geek you love bits and pieces of electronic gear and computer gear and camera gear but on to the video this is the MX master Logitech wireless mouse and if you can see here I have my fancy new setup this is a very professional setup so I can edit video and edit photos very quickly so I can do a good job for my clients and of course myself now, this computer came, well no, you had to, I had to pay for this, yet I had to, you can get it without the Apple mouse, but I thought I'd get it and test it out, and the, I always had in mind that this Apple mouse would become, would go onto the laptop, which is here, the Josh Takes Photos, the Josh Takes Photos old MacBook, and this is the mid-2012 MacBook, which is kind of ancient now for computer, for technology. Uh, three and a half years, over three and a half years old. So this is going to become the tethering computer for when I'm doing shoots and if I need a computer out on location. But it's a bit slow and aging, so I have got the new setup, the iMac. The iMac 27 inch, everything boosted up except the memory, so I'm going to get third party memory. And Apple memory is kind of expensive. It's always better to get third party. So I'm going to get some third party RAM, stick it in the back, and probably max it out to 64 gigabytes because my Photoshop files are huge. Lots of layers. I want to do some fine art and I want to have really good, high quality files. And so I'm going to need big, I'm going to need a lot of RAM 64 gigabyte or maybe 32, but well. Chips are cheap, as they say. Um, don't splur, don't don't skimp when you're getting computer stuff because your productivity and your time is more important. Anyway, I tend to waffle a lot on these videos, so I should get to the point. Let's open it. So this is the MX Master. It's I did my own research and it's the best mouse to get right now at this moment. January 2016. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, I need a mouse that's comfortable and I like wireless and so many features and it's accurate. It's got dark field laser so it can track on my Wacom tablet. I like to leave my Wacom tablet here so I don't have to move my setup around. And the Apple mouse isn't really good on this surface. It's kind of shiny and the laser kind of doesn't track that well. So I've always wanted to get a better mouse. Now this is a dark field laser which can even track on glass as long as it's thicker than four millimeters. So if you have a glass table you can even use this mouse. So it's it wasn't cheap it was 449 Hong Kong dollars unofficially and but it's the best mouse on the market according to my research. So I felt it I've there are places you can try it out and test it out, test the grip. So they, they had demo units. Packaging packaging's kind of nice. The little magnetic cover here clips into place and looks very simple. So you turn on, press the button. Now this button on the back, one, two, three, lets you control up to three computers. So I can actually connect it to the mouse and bring it on location. Not mouse, the laptop. Bring it on location and use it when I'm switching. So if you run a couple computers, that could be cool. You'd have to turn it upside down, press the button, and put it back. So I'm not sure if that's the best setup if you have multiple computers at the same location. But if you have two computers and you're only going to use one at the same time, it's good for that. It has two ways to connect. Bluetooth, so Macs have uh, Bluetooth built in. Or if you have Logitech stuff, it has a unifying receiver. I'm going to use Bluetooth on this. 
and see how it goes. I don't think I'll need the unifying receiver unless it works out better. So maybe less interference or maybe the refresh rate is better. I do like a game of StarCraft 2 multiplayer sometimes. So this will be a good test to see if I can control my units and play effectively in high bronze league. High bronze league, which means I'm kind of a noob. But yeah, I kind of want a mouse that's good for gaming. Very light gaming. I am too busy to game, unfortunately, these days. There's a piece of glue string here. And something about Logitech.com slash MX Master. I guess I need to download some software for that. So anyway, let's open this bad boy. Hmm. I didn't even read the box before I did this. But maybe I should read it up before I open it. Smart speed adaptive scroll wheel. So that's the one on top. And you've also got a thumb wheel here. So with this mouse, when you scroll it really quickly, it, okay, when you scroll it slowly, it has this click, 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 click. But when you scroll it fast, it will take that away. So there's some sort of mechanical switch that is electronically activated or the clicking device can be uh, deactivated. So that's kind of cool. So there's a thumb wheel, power management up to 40 days on a single charge, fast charging. And you can always plug it in when you need uh, to use it when it's low battery. So let's open this thing. One of my favorite tools, a Leatherman Wave. Now I'm not actually sponsored by anyone at all, but I like to, I like to, I like to teach, and as part of what part of teaching is, I like to talk about good tools. So this is great. The Leatherman Wave, I think, is the the tool for photographers because it has a bit driver, which is very useful. So. I've got the screwdriver on there, that comes out, and you can put Allen keys and stuff like that, which is very useful in photography because you're changing camera plates and you're, wow, you're adjusting lots of equipment, lots of gear. MX Master unboxing. I will get rid of this. So one thing I need to learn is to do more videos that are more concise, but there is something good about long videos. So, YouTube, people have shorter attention spans, but there is a good thing about having long videos. There are people that actually want to watch informative, long videos that have good information. So I'm kind of practicing that right now, as well as getting good in front of camera, which is why this is appearing on my test channel. But who knows, maybe Josh Tam's diary, after 100 days, because I do a video every day to get good practice. Maybe later it, I do some more polished, more edited videos and actually try to up the quality. But right now I'm trying to get more FaceTime in front of the camera to become more natural, to become used to the camera, to practice my narration and to be better in future when I want to start my photography uh, YouTube channel. But anyway, on to the unboxing. We have this guide. This guide here. But, well, it tells you about the mouse. Okay. Oh, hidden underneath is the micro USB charging cable. Got plenty of them, and it's branded Logitech. So hopefully this is a good quality cable and it has data, it must have data. So I think I'm gonna really like this cable. I've got so many USB devices. That lifts off the top and here we are. Now I hope you can see it. Good thing I've got my monitor here so I can see what you're gonna see. And 
feels nice. Feels nice. It's different to how it was in the shop. It's this very dark bronze color, and and I like it. It's it's molded for right righties, right, my right hand. So if you're left-handed, uh, well, they don't make a left-handed version. So you're gonna have to use your right hand, or this mouse isn't for you. In the box is a little unifying receiver, and I'm gonna take that out so you can see it. Right there, it says Logitech on this on the top, Logitech. But this also has Bluetooth, and rather than take up one of my USB ports, I am gonna set this up as Bluetooth. Now there's a switch on the bottom. You can see there that you can choose between Bluetooth or unifying. Now it's kind of, okay, I've only just seen this. One criticism is the switch goes up and down, but there's no way to tell which one is unifying and which one is Bluetooth. It would be better if they, if they put, okay, if the up position is unifying, then put the unifying logo on top. If the down position is Bluetooth, then put the Bluetooth logo on top. I hope you can see that. You probably can't. I'm going to catch the light. Maybe there you can see it. This is tricky because it's a very wide angle and it can't focus up close. Okay, so maybe there. Um, excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold, so... <sighs> I'd edit that, but, well, this is a test channel. You're watching me practicing. Okay, so, first off, it would make sense for the first one to be unifying and the second one to be Bluetooth. Connect. Now, there was a quick guide. Maybe I actually need to use that. Wasn't it on the back of the box? Ooh. Okay, number one, turn it on. Oh, this is an on and off switch. Okay, it goes green, so my fault. I saw the battery indicator blink and it's on two power, so I might need to charge this a little bit. So that's an on and off switch and it is blinking one. I am going to use the Apple mouse to turn on the Bluetooth, which is Bluetooth. Now, can you see my screen? Yes, you can. It's a little far away, sorry about that. Later on, I'm gonna get some screen capturing software, so I can actually pull up the screen, boom, in front there, and you can see what I'm doing in front of the screen. So I need to test that out as well. If you're watching this, maybe you know some good screen grabbing uh, software. I know QuickTime does it. Um, and that's included on my Mac. So I might try that out. Excuse me, I am a, a little bit sick or it's a bit dusty here. Okay. I see MX Master on my screen and pair. Well, I guess I'm going to click. It says I should click connect. Well, that changes the one, two, three. I don't know if you can see that. Of course, I want this to be number one. Yep, you can see that changing. I want it to be number one, so I'm going to leave it at number one and click pair. Feels really nice. It's kind of weighted. It's good for mice to have a bit of weight because I think it's a, it's a more ergonomic thing and it helps with precision. If it's too light, you're just controlling with your hands. So you want to move something. MX Master connected. And, well, it works. That's it. That's it. It works. I have a multi-screen setup and the cursor's here. One cool thing with Apple, if you, if you lose your cursor, and that's really easy because I have a lot of screen real estate. Uh, just quickly move your mouse and you see this cursor goes really big. That's, that's quite cool. That's on by default. 
I can see MX Master here connected. It doesn't tell me the battery, the Apple stuff. I can see a little battery icon for my trackpad, my Magic Keyboard, and my Magic Mouse 2. And my trackpad's running a bit low. But my MX Master connected doesn't show a battery. But I do have one here, so there must be a way to try it there. I'll put the mouse, the Apple Mouse, Magic Mouse 2 here, and see how it tracks on my on my Wacom tablet. Okay, feels good. Let's try the Apple Mouse. Pretty good. Not too bad. Now, this the Apple Mouse has never felt totally accurate to me on on the Wacom tablet. And I don't know if this is subliminal to or not, but this feels like it's tracking a lot better. It is better hardware. It's a dark field laser, as I mentioned before, which can track even on glass. So, well, I've got, I have a window here. I'm going to try it there. It's kind of dirty and it works. Works on glass. Probably helps that it's a really dirty window. Anyway, I'm going to load up Safari. Mac sales, so I was looking at my memory. Maybe I'll open Facebook. Facebook.com. I can stalk my friends, they can stalk me. Great. And okay, I'm scrolling up and down on this mouse, and I feel the clicks go away when I scroll quickly. And then when I scroll slowly, they're back. This is cool. This is really cool. I like that. There is a button here to get rid of it completely in the middle. So if you click that once, now it's free free rolling. So I can I can just spin it there and it keeps spinning. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can catch the light. I'll spin it there, but if I press that, well, I, I heard it even kind of break, like apply a break to it. Now it will stop. It will only scroll a little bit. That's pretty cool. I have the sideways one which is good for scrolling across this way. Left mouse, left mouse works. Let's see what Josh Town. Okay, some photos there, back to Facebook. Let's see if right click works, yes. And I've got a few other buttons. So I actually haven't used this before. Um, I might have to play around with it a bit more and do another video. Or not, because I've got so much to do, and the mouse videos, well, I can do a review later once I've gotten used to it, but very nice. This will be my mouse for the next five years or whatever until it breaks. Now, I should mention, I do want to use it for five years, but it has, ooh, I don't want to, I hope I haven't scratched on the window. There's a few scratch marks on the little pads here. Now, this has a built-in battery, so... It may not last that long. Batteries tend to die after a few years. It can be plugged into USB through the front and charged kind of like that. You, you can use it as a normal cable mouse. So if the battery dies, then it can always become a regular cable mouse. So quite a long review. I hope I've been informative and I'm not sure if I have because this is my second unboxing video. The last one was this thing. So now you can actually see it uh, working and it's El Capitan, it's, it's my new Mac, some new gear. Good to start the year off with some new gear as well. So I'm going to give this mouse uh, a, a proper go through its paces and use it in Lightroom and Hopefully it's going to be great. I don't want to sell the thing. That's kind of annoying to buy gear that oh, I really have a bit of a cold. Excuse me for the third time. Oh. Uh, I don't want to buy gear. That's crappy. So I like to spend good money on gear and hopefully it works. And I get really frustrated when my gear doesn't work and I spent good money on it. So one of my pet peeves is stuff that doesn't work. Anyway. I am going to leave you now. Thanks for watching this really long video yet again and letting me practice being in front of camera. So till next time on Josh Takes 
photos. Sorry, not, not yet. On Josh Tam's video diary. I'm signing off and catch you next time. And cut.